Fabulous Living with Angela Jones, and welcome to my first episode. I am so excited, but you didn't, you know, you're not here to watch me dance, so we're gonna get on with things because I'm uber excited about this first episode. So, just you know, by way of background, I have southern roots, you know. My parents are both from Alabama, so my peoples can throw down, okay? We are, you know, if I must say so myself, you know, we're very good cooks in our family, you know? Um, and food is very important, not just to my family, but just to black families. It's just part of our culture. Food is a natural part of our culture. And given that it is, you know, Black History Month, and I am Black History, <laughs> um, I thought it would be awesome to, you know, one, do something that is connected with our history, and that a big part of that is food. Um, you know, it's a part of our history as a people, and I think it's definitely a, a part of my history. Well, it's not I think, I know it's a part of my history as far as my family. Food has always been the connector. Barbecues, Easter dinners, Fourth of July, you know, what have you, you know. Even though I'm not really down with doing the Fourth of July thing anymore. Juneteenth is when we're going to start celebrating. But anyway, food is a big deal. So. Throughout the month of February, I'm going to be highlighting different um, things, not just food, um, but different things that are about um, the culture, you know? So the first thing that I wanted to demonstrate for you guys and share with you is something that is very near and dear to my heart, and that is the biscuits. Um, you're going to learn about me. I love, uh, love bread, okay? Love bread. Have to have it for every meal. It's a problem, I know. I know all you people who are like, shouldn't be eating a lot of carbs and all that good stuff. Okay. Sorry. Good for you if you can handle that. I have to have carbs in my life, and I love bread. And one of the things that I love about biscuits is it's just, it's a quick bread recipe. It's super easy. And if you are in a, you know, in the South, biscuits are a staple. Biscuits and cornbread. And, you know, biscuits are amazing because they are, they can be, how can I explain it? They are very simple to make. And I know a lot of people doubt that, but I'm gonna show you some things today that are going to make this, gonna make you a believer in that we're gonna do a simple biscuit recipe. They're very simple, yet they're also in some ways seem very decadent. Decadent. Did I say that right? Decadent. Decadent? For some years, sometimes you say stuff that doesn't sound right. Decadent, decadent, decadent. Rich, rich. <laughs> so, but they're, they're delicious. I love biscuits. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get into this recipe. You're gonna love me for this recipe because it's only three ingredients. And a lot of what makes, what, what helps your biscuits, you know, to be the perfect, you know, balance of fluffiness and have a nice crumb and texture and be really tall and all of that good stuff is the ingredients that you use. So, for starters, white lily flour. Say it with me, white lily flour. It makes the difference. Um, I've been baking biscuits for a long time and I've, don't get me wrong, because technique is part of it, I can make biscuits without white lily flour, but why would I? I'm just saying. You know, white lily, if you need somebody to represent your brand, how about your girl? Because uh, I swear by you guys, but seriously, white lily is a staple in the southern kitchen. If you're up north, you're going to find most people use King Arthur um, and some other brands. I don't know, but I use white lily. Don't get me wrong, like I said, I have used other brands, but... 
White Lily makes your biscuits really delicate because who wants a biscuit that's like a hockey puck? Nobody, nobody. In the words of uh, Keith Sweat, nobody. Nobody wants a biscuit <laughs> that's really hard and tough. You want a nice tender biscuit. And the, the difference with white lily flour is because it's a softer winter flour. So it makes your, um, the texture really light. And that's what you want in a biscuit. And it's also low in protein also. And all of those factors then make it uh, low in gluten which is what you want too. I mean, there's a whole science to it. I'm kind of like a little bit of a, it's weird, I don't like science, but I love to bake and I love baking because of the science of it all. Like knowing when you put this together and you put that together and it does this, but if you take away this, it does something. I love that. It's really weird I hate science. Sorry, daddy. Don't like science. My father is a biology major. He's probably like cringing because I'm saying I hate science, but he knows how to get good grades in science, so 52. <laughs> um, but anywho, um, white lily, if you can find it. Now, in all seriousness, if you can't find white lily, because I know that it's, it's hard to find in other areas, you can use another flower. It's not the end of the world. Another thing that we're doing today to make this easier, too, because if you didn't have uh, we're going to use self-rising flour. That's going to make it easier because self-rising flour has everything that you need in it. You, got the, you have the flour, you have baking powder, you have salt. So I put this out just so you can see, you know, baking powder and salt, we don't need that. I'm going to put that over there. This is all we need. And it's great. So that's going to make it simpler. You don't have to, you know, Futs around with having a leavener and salt and the flour. I'm gonna put that aside. You have this, so that's one ingredient. The other thing about um, I'm gonna put that in here. So two cups of the self-rising flour. We're gonna pour into our bowl. There. That's that. The other factor. The other factor in biscuits is um, fat. Gotta have fat. That's what makes biscuits, that's what makes them taste so darn good is, is the fat, the butter. So what we're gonna do, what we, what, what we use is one stick, eight tablespoons, of salted butter. And I like to use Irish butter. Why? Don't get me wrong. Hey, everything, everything can, there's substitutes, right? There's nothing hard and fast about it. The bottom line is I want you to make the biscuits and I want you to see how simple it is. Like I said, we can deviate on some things. So if you don't have, uh, you know, Kerrygold Irish butter is not the end of the world. But the difference with Irish butter is because the cows are grass fed, the butter is actually better. And, it, and, it, and Irish butter has a higher fat content than American butter does. So of course, the more, <laughs> the more fat we can get up in this, the better. You know, it's gonna make for a better biscuit. So let me grab very quickly from the freezer and I'll explain to you why I have the butter there. Let me just grab the butter and then I'm gonna grate a little bit for you. Okay, so this here is just about a stick of um, a stick of salted butter, and again, it's Irish butter. And I'm gonna have all of that in the um, in the recipe. I'll have all the details and all these little tips and tricks that are gonna help you to make bomb biscuits. That'll all be in the description um, for you, so don't worry about that. So first off. I've already washed my hands because I'm super anal about that. <laughs> I'm going to take my jewelry off. And some tips here. If you, to me, this is just in my opinion, I know that I am a, you know, pretty seasoned baker. Um, but to me, these tips help you to handle the dough and everything better too. So there's a method to my madness. 
you know, old school, like my mom, my grandmother, my great grandmother, my aunt, you know, all my, you know, elders would take the butter and you just, you know, you know, you would take a stick of butter and you chop it and you just put it in there and then you just start to handle it until it becomes, you know, um, till they're like the size of like little peas start to form, right? But I learned, again, technique, technique, technique. I can't tell you. You're going to see that as, we, as we're going on with this recipe. But a tip is to, one, start off with frozen butter. I keep, because I make a lot of biscuits, can't you tell by my hips? I uh, don't know. Um, <laughs> I do. I make a lot of biscuits because not, not, I'm not the only one that likes them. My son loves biscuits too. So I tend to keep a lot of butter around because I bake a lot and because uh, mainly for biscuits. So I tend to keep some of this butter on hand, but I keep it in the freezer. And the one reason why you want to keep the butter in the freezer is because um, you want everything to be really cold. You know, that's one of the things you don't want. That'll ruin your, that's probably one reason why your biscuits haven't worked in the past is because everything wasn't really cold. So that's why I kind of, that's why I kept this butter in the freezer great until the last possible minute. Now I keep it in the freezer on hand solid, but for these purposes for our recipe, I already kind of grated everything ahead of time and put it in the freezer. And that also helps with your rise for your biscuits too. You know, that everything stays really, really cold. So, without further ado, I am going to, you know, just grate a little more for you that I have here. And see, because it's been sitting out, it's soft, but that's okay, because we're gonna fix that. But I wanted to just, you know, for the visual effect, put a little more out there for you. And this, I'm just gonna just take these last pieces and just kind of add them to it, because they're pretty mushy. That's okay, like I said, we're getting ready. To fix that so no worries there so I just kind of take it and I grate it across there and see think about it all of these little pockets of butter will then be evenly distributed through the biscuit okay so there you go I'm gonna add that all to we are not leaving any butter in this container. So, yeah. Not leaving any on the spoon. All the butter will be in the biscuit. There. Okay. So, I'm just going to kind of make sure all the butter gets tossed in with the flour. Remember that little big chunk at the end that I had left? We're gonna make sure that that is all covered. Now one thing too, as far as like your equipment, that's the other thing, you don't need much. You need your bowl, spoon, your ingredients, and I do everything else with my hands. And I know some people frown upon that, but I'm kind of old school with that. Then I'll show you how I kind of fix that with another, another technique. So you kind of want to make sure that the biscuit, all the butter, if you can see there, is all covered with the flour. And we're going to form a well. And next, more fat, because they're biscuits. So, hey, you know, <laughs> Complete transparency. Y'all are gonna see multiple iterations of the biscuit because I make a lot of biscuits and I have a lot of different recipes in my uh, repertoire. So, yeah. So we're gonna see different iterations. We're gonna see cheese biscuits, sweet potato biscuits, um, ham and cheese biscuits. We're gonna see all kinds of biscuits. So don't worry, we have different variations of the biscuit that I will be preparing on the show. Um, but for today's purposes, it's buttermilk biscuit. Buttermilk, again, much like the Irish butter, is higher in fat than regular um, buttermilk. So 
uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, than regular milk. Let's repeat that. Buttermilk is higher in fat than regular milk. I talk really fast, so I'm probably gonna be doing lots of little edits and putting little comments at the bottom because I talk really fast. But anywho, um, I love to use buttermilk in the biscuits. And again, for the same reason I prefer to use Irish butter. Now, if you don't have buttermilk, you can always use whole milk and vinegar, and that will be a substitute for buttermilk. Whole fat buttermilk is very hard to find. When I find it, I buy multiples of them, and I also keep them in the freezer, because it's really hard to find. Usually, most stores only carry low fat buttermilk, which is, to me, kind of a, you know, an oxymoron, like, you know, I don't know. Anyway, I'm like, it's buttermilk. It should be whole fat, but anyway. Um, I digress. Buttermilk is the way to go. And we're going to add three-fourths cup. Right there, we put it, we created a well. And when I say a well, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, um, make anyone feel like they're done, but I'm not gonna assume that everyone knows how to cook, so I'm always gonna kinda of try to explain things as best I can. So forming a well, you know, moving all of the flour to the side, and then placing the milk in the middle. Then we're just going to stir. So I say about 15 times until the dough starts to form and it starts to separate from the sides of the bowl. So that was one turn, two, Okay, now, again, this is a situation where you kind of, if it's your first time, you won't know that it's right or not. But I can tell you this. You can check that out and see that is not the consistency that we want. Let me tell you my tip for this because white lily is so fine. I find that if you put in more milk that's needed, then you end up with a really wet dough and then you have to add a whole, you know, a lot of flour. So there is a, you have to kind of finesse it a little bit. So since I, I'd rather have, we'll put it this way, I'd rather have too little than too much because you can always add. You can't take away. Once you put in way too much of something, the jig is up. You know what I'm saying? So so let's add. I had some more buttermilk, not much, um, <laughs> left. Because again, it's hard to find. And everybody is baking a lot in these here Rona streets. So I'm finding that it's hard to find stuff sometimes. And again, the thing with biscuits, which can make them tough, is overhandling the dough. So we're gonna add, you know, I probably added enough to maybe make it another cup, but you just wanna feel it. You gotta feel it, you gotta feel it. Okay, now we're talking. Now it's starting to separate some. Okay. All right, all right, all right. All right. Okay. You can see now it's separating from the bowl. And let me show you. You know, until we, bear with me, people, until we get, you know, all the technology set up so you can see things overhead and all that fancy schmancy stuff. You know, I'm gonna try to show you things as much as I can in the camera. So we want that. That's how the dough should start to form. And it's starting to separate from the bowl. And this is good. And I think that, again, we leave no, we leave no dough behind, okay? Let's scrape all that off. Okay. We want to take a little bit of flour. Let's move all this to the side here so you all can get a good visual. Now, 
I'm gonna take a little bit of flour and place it on our marble pastry board. Again, I don't want anyone to feel limited. Oh, I don't have that, so I can't, you know, do it. You know, she had all this other stuff I don't have. You can put this on wax paper. You know, if your counter is really clean, clean it down. You can do it on your counter. Seriously, it's, it's not that deep. But let me tell you what is good about a marble pastry board. A marble pastry board is great to use because marble keeps your dough cold. That's why you see so many uh, bakers using it because, especially when it comes to a dough, because it keeps everything, it's, it's cool, you know? And again, we wanna keep our dough as cold as possible. So that's why it's so great. Oh, it smells so good, I love it. I don't have uh, anything prepared for dinner. This gets my feet by dinner. I've done that before. So, and there's nothing wrong with it. Biscuits and butter or with cheese in the middle. Some people like, you know, to put a honey butter on top or syrup. Yummy. Jam, whatever. Whatever you like. So let's take the dough. We have it here. And your dough should, you know, like I said, we don't want to overhandle it. You know, I know I went and I did a few more, you know, rounds because I added more milk to it, but I was handling it very lightly, if you noticed, you know? But, but you know, people always say, hey, we shouldn't, we don't want to over, you know, overhandle the dough. You don't want to underhandle it either. You just, you want to get a good balance. And I know that comes with time if, if you're a novice to baking, but, Anyway, what we're gonna do is here, at this step, some people pull out a rolling pin. For me, I like to do it all by hand. That's how I saw my mother make biscuits. I never saw her pull out a rolling pin. She was very old school and did it with her hands. So that's what I do. And I like to feel the dough. Now I know some people, you know, um, biscuit purists, I would call them, or would say, no, you just said you wanted to keep everything cold, you know, but you're using your hands, which is in turn going to melt the butter and the dough and blah, blah, blah. Again, dude, that's why I put some things in place. One, that's why I had the frozen butter. Two, and this extremely cold milk. Um, and the marble pastry board, right? But the next step, I'm gonna, I'm gonna redeem myself for doing it by hand. But if you want to do it with a, you know, rolling pin, feel free to. So I spread the whole dough out into like a rectangle with my hands just very gently into a nice rectangle. Then I fold it in thirds. Bam. One way. Bam. The other way. Okay. Then I spread it out again. And what am I doing here? I'm forming layers, because that's what we want. All those thick, beautiful layers, right? Because we want our biscuits to rise nice and tall. And I can see the little pieces of butter. <laughs> it's so good. So we fold it that way, right? Then we're gonna fold it. Actually, let me turn it this way for you so you can see. We're gonna, we take it, it's, it almost looks like a little letter. A little biscuit letter. And then we're gonna fold it again. We're gonna do the same thing again in thirds. Bam. Bam. And now we have another rectangle. Slide it around, we're gonna spread it out. And we're gonna do this a few times. This is how you form all the layers. In the biscuits. And again, that's why I say a lot of it is, don't get me wrong, I have my little things, you know, my little, you know, particularities about like the ingredients and things like that and, you know, but I've learned too that a lot of it is about the technique. So, I think doing these different things, as let's say if you didn't find, have white lily or you didn't have Kerrygold butter, doing some key things 
ensuring that the butter that you do have is, is frozen and you grate it. And that the um, milk that you use is really cold. Those things are gonna help. And then fold you on this folding technique to create the layers. That's gonna give you the, the, a good biscuit, in my humble opinion. So now I'm gonna take it again, fold it again. There we are. Spread it out again into another smaller rectangle. Then we're gonna go in again and fold it again. Spread it out again. I know you're like, what? So now I feel like we need a little more because we've been handling it and just a touch more flour. And again, it's as needed. As you see that the flour is kind of, it's just starting to stick to your hands like it is mine, then that means it's time for you to add more to your board, okay? So let's make sure we get that all floured again. There. Okay, get another rectangle. It's gonna be our last round, I think, and we should be good. All right. Bam. 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 And another round. Okay. All right. Let's get that all covered again. And now. Now, if I were going to, I could use a rolling pin at this point. I just don't like to use it for the, for the earlier process. And another thing for me, <laughs> and everybody has their thing, right? I like to do square biscuits. I don't like to use a biscuit cutter because there's always that one jacked up biscuit at the end. You know what I'm saying? That didn't kind of make it, you know, that's left after you cut everything out. And it's never a pretty biscuit. I mean, it tastes good, let's be clear. But it's not always, eh, I don't know. I just like the shape. I like square biscuits. Well, I, I mean, I haven't had a biscuit I don't like. So I will eat a round biscuit, square biscuit, triangle biscuit, whatever. But I'm just saying, I like to just keep it easy and not even have to be bothered with a cutter. And then that's another thing, you know, if you don't have a cutter, you don't have to worry about it because all you need is a knife or a pizza cutter. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna stretch this out a little longer. I kind of tend to make my biscuits a little bit on the big side because I'm greedy like that. But I try to get this in a nice um, rectangle there. And I usually end up getting about eight to 10 biscuits out of it. And like I said, I kind of like mine kind of thick. But you can stretch the dough out. You can, you can definitely end up getting about 12 biscuits out of this recipe. But like I said, I kind of make mine a little bit thicker. But here we go. Well, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I kind of like them to look kind of rustic like. And actually, I'm gonna use a pizza cutter because I just think a pizza cutter is so much easier to maneuver. So I'm looking a little funky dory, as my mother would say. But I kind of like them kind of hunky dory. <laughs> All right, okay, y'all, that's enough. So I take the pizza cutter or your knife. Wait a minute. The pizza cutter sometimes gets water in it. So we don't want water on our biscuits. So I'm gonna slice it. 
lengthwise, and then we're going to actually cut into our biscuits. So we get nice rectangular shaped biscuits. Got 10. No, actually we did end up getting 12. Wait a minute. I told you. Science, math, not my not my jam. But I can count money and food. We have 12 biscuits, people. <laughs> so I want you to see how lovely those little layers are starting to form in there. It's so many layers, you can't even makes you dizzy. They're so pretty. So, what we're going to do next, I have a sheet pan that I put a part, piece of parchment paper in. And again, if you don't have parchment paper, spray a little nonstick cooking spray on the pan and put them on there. You know, we are, we're gonna, these biscuits will get prepared, so you have no excuse. So let me do a little switcheroo here. <clears throat> My 10 pound bag of flour. Ridiculous. Move everything to the side here. Okay. And we're going to put the biscuits on the pan. Now, tip. When you put the biscuits on, put them on as close as you can to each other because you want them to touch why because if they touch that's going to help them you know to rise and get taller so we want to kind of keep them in the same formation that they were here on the board over a little bit. Actually, let's do them the wrong way. And that'll be easier. Yeah, that's better. Long way, long way. On the pan. Okay, and as close as we can get them together. I'm gonna leave a tiny little bit of space in between. But for the most part, we want these jokers to be kind of close. Oh, these are gonna be so bomb. Mm, mm, mm. Now, remember I said, you know, the, the, the dough needs to say as cold as possible, blah, blah, blah. But then I went in with my hands because that's how I like to handle my biscuit dough. And that warmed up the dough. This is the other key to making fantastic biscuits. You wanna take your pan and then you're gonna put them in the freezer. Now, you can just put them in, I mean, because it's gonna, you know. I have left these in the freezer for hours and forgotten about them, and then popped them right into the oven and it wasn't a problem. But you really only need them in there for a few minutes. I would say anywhere from, maybe, anywhere from minimum 15 minutes, but I would say about 30 minutes, because we want them to go from frozen to the, to the oven. And I'll explain that when, uh, when I'm about to put them in the oven, when we get them out, I'll explain that. But for now, we're gonna get these babies in the oven. I'm sorry, I'm moving ahead, freezer. stay for a few minutes and we'll be right back to pop those out and get them in the oven. See you in a few. So we have lovely biscuits y'all. Mm, mm, mm. My home smells amazing. So now 
we want to, hey, one quick thing I forgot to, that I failed to mention earlier is that um, the biscuits frozen will last in the freezer for up to two months. <laughs> but if you're anything like me and mine, they will not last that long. But just saying, if you happen to, you know, triple or quadruple the recipe, just know that they will last in the, in the freezer for, for up to two months, which I think is fabulous. So, they're a nice golden brown, which is exactly what we want. Now we're gonna take some of that same butter that we use in the recipe. We're just gonna take a, I just melted some, taking a pastry brush, and yeah, brushing them with this butter. Mm, mm, mm. Amazing. Yeah, there you go. And like I said, I don't normally put butter on the inside of mine. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But personal preference. Now they're ready for your butter on the inside. Some honey, jam, jelly, syrup, whatever you like. But I'm going to indulge and have one. And I want you to see here how nice, and I love that they get a nice crust on the outside, so to speak, but then they're nice and fluffy because we allow them to touch. And then on the inside, baby, oh, MG, you have all the fluffiness and the nooks and crannies. And again, this is not a hockey puck. It's nice and light. Ugh, you know what? I'm gonna put a little butter on the middle, right? Like, why not? Here we go. Mmm. Delicious, light, airy, mm, so good. So there you have, there you have it, y'all. Homemade biscuits, easy to make, simple, a nice treat for your family. And if, even, like I said, even if you're not like a master baker and baking really isn't your jam, you can make these biscuits. So look for the recipe. The blog is coming, y'all. So hopefully I'll have the blog all set up and we'll be able to put, post the recipe on the blog. Whenever it's up, the site is up, I'll make sure that this recipe is there. If for some reason there's some technical glitch or what have you, I'll make sure that all of the ingredients and the recipe, all that good stuff is in the description box. So please give them a try. Until next time, please subscribe, like, comment. This is my first show, so tell me what you like, what you don't like. You know, I want to see your face in the place so that we can form a beautiful and wonderful, you know, community that's all about lifestyle, good food, decor, entertaining, all that good stuff. So anyway, in the meantime, I'm ready to kill this biscuit. I'll see y'all next time. Ciao. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. Yum.